and so. Hmm. The grace of the true power that is the supreme. The grace of the true power that is the self. Ever humbling every single thread of individuality. Perfectly humbling everything into love. Into the wide open heart of the mother of all, that which is the supreme, that which is a pure divinity, a pure truth, a pure light. That nothing escapes her, nothing escapes her. It is all about coming to the power of now, coming to the power of your own presence, coming to the power of complete and utter surrender. Because where there is surrender, there is the flow of life that is eternal. There is a flow of life that never dies. There is a flow of life that is timeless being. And this is the being that you are in truth. You are the eternal, timeless one. Ever shining in the knowing of the self, the self shining its luminous, ever-present light in the knowing of its own true nature. And you are that, you are that, that one and only standing alone. There is no doer. We could say the only doer is that supreme the only doer, the only one that holds all responsibility. And to that we belong. Our mission is to surrender into that, into the now, into the timeless, in order to come to the impressionable knowing of true belonging. So this is why we speak of following the longing. We follow the longing that seems to be a personal longing to find out that, that felt sense, that free sense of longing. So that free sense of longing, it belongs to no one. It is the supreme divine longing for all of herself to be shining in the knowing of this one truth. The illumination, the light of the eternal. Hmm. There is no power outside, and yet everything belongs. Everything is perfect, but there is no one that can control. There is no one that can be bigger, vaster, greater than the pure and simple truth, the shining light that is the supreme, the unfathomable, 
that which we can never make sense of, can only know it through the constant surrender. In order to be a living surrender, the life that seems to be individual is a life that is being lived, let's say, through filters. And the mission is for all the filters to fall away, for all of those filters to fall away. And so life is just living itself. Just life living itself in utter surrender to itself. Where there is no one controlling, no one doing, no one wanting it this way or that way, no one resisting. It's just the flow of life in utter, utter surrender to itself. And so in truth, as the self, we are living surrender. We are that life in constant divine surrender into itself. When we speak of the divine, we are speaking of that which is simply pure and pristine and is the wholeness, the wholeness, the whole power, the whole love, the whole joy, the whole happiness, the whole self, the whole one knowing itself, right? There's a simplicity to it. We're speaking of the wholeness where there is just no separation, where there is no sense, illusion of separation. And when there is no illusion of separation, there is no delusion in the mind about who I am. And, and in that there is, there is surrender, simple surrender, again and again and again. It is amazing how we can come to a surrender, can see the clarity of a situation that has been brought forward just to humble us. We can fall into the openness, the grace, the wide open heart of love into the knowing. And then another feeling comes in and suddenly it is as if we have forgotten. Oh, but what about this situation? This must be different. It's always exactly the same. That's why it is so simple. There is only one divine formula. <laughs> and it is even a surrender to accept the simplicity of the divine formula. <laughs> because the mind is constantly attempting to create complexity. Because in complexity, the patterns of ego can continue to survive. And there is a false sense of safety in, the, in a certain familiar knowing. But that familiar knowing of the me and the ego-centric patterning is not true self. It's not the full picture, let's say. Of course, in truth, everything belongs to the one, everything is part of the wholeness. But this is where you cannot know it feeling like a part, can only know it feeling the wholeness. And then you see that which thought they were a part and realize that the part was always <laughs> part of the whole <laughs> and never divided. But you cannot know wholeness as a, as a seeming part you cannot know wholeness holding the edges of a seeming fragmentation, of a, of a limited sense. You cannot know the unlimited through the felt sense of limitation. You can only know the unlimited, unbounded freedom that you are. And from the clear perspective of being awareness, you can see that which once thought they were divided. And you know in essence, essence truth, that there never has been any division. 
So every opportunity, every glimpse there is, it's to feel the wholeness, feel the whole self. In this moment, this moment, every moment is this moment in a way that the mind cannot understand. Every moment is now. Only mind creates a past and a future. We could say though, that even the sense of past and future is here now. They are, they are things <laughs> in the timeless now. And you are not a thing. You are the timeless now. You are none of its parts. So let's say even the illusion of past and future, they are things, they are, they are parts of the whole. You cannot know yourself through parts. You can only know yourself in the nowness, the timeless, eternal sense, felt sense of knowing the being that is unfragmented, undivided, immeasurable, invincible, wholeness. So the glory is that you already are. And so the glory is that as these words come, there is the possibility of attuning and remembering. That is why it is never about attempting to understand with the mind. Listen with the heart, listen with your whole being. Do not listen with the mind. Do not listen with the one that wants. Do not listen with any sense of expectation. You will be disappointed if that is where you are listening from. Listen with your openness. Listen with your fullness. Listen with the heart that just is. And listen from here without even knowing how. It is just to relax and receive. Recognize there is this open listening that is naturally happening. There is this open receptivity that is naturally happening. It is gentle, open, presence, more simple than the mind could ever imagine. So we could say even underneath every thought that the mind could have of what it's not getting, of what's not happening, of what it doesn't understand, underneath every single thought that is a thing, you already are. And there is a resonant attunement right here now in this moment that is the alive field. The alive field is still. The alive field is silent. The alive field is pure awareness. The alive field just is. It is your amness, your isness, your beingness, all the same, different words, same one essential nature, same one self that all beings belong to. And so as these words come, where you feel a resonance of truth, it is just to fall into that resonance. Do not try to work it out, do not try to understand. We could say it is a surrender into. The mind will constantly be attempting to pull the attention away. The surrender is to be here now, to feel your own presence, to feel your own simple sense of existence, that you are here. There's a knowing that you are here that is so simple. But the knowing of this is not mental. The mind will constantly be attempting to co-opt and try to pull, let's say, the power of attention. So even where there is a sense of the mind that says, yes, yes, I know this, I recognize this, this is familiar, this is old news, <laughs> right? Every attempt of the mind 
that thinks it knows something. It does not matter how many times you have heard this truth. The self, the being, is absolutely fascinated by itself. Absolutely fascinated. And it is to feel where that alignment comes in, where you can feel an attunement, that felt sense of that which recognizes. It is like you have been lost. You have never felt a belonging. You have never felt a sense of being seen or understood. You have never felt like you belong in this world. I've always felt different. I've never found anywhere where there is a sense of feeling right and relaxed and a belonging. And then suddenly you see a reflection of yourself. You feel a sense of what you belong to. You feel a sameness. But this belonging is not a mental sense of ego that is, is in that sense of, oh yes, we like the same things, we enjoy, we enjoy the same things. It is a recognition that is so deep and profound. And it can so easily be overlooked because the mind is constantly searching. True belonging is here in the stillness. True belonging is here in the silence of being. It is like an immediate simple melting into yourself. That which has felt to be divided can spontaneously feel its wholeness, a sameness, a belonging that is without question. You could say a familiarity, but it is a familiarity that is so intimate. It is as if the deepest longing of your heart is speaking back to you, as if someone has been listening to the secrets of your heart. Everything that has been longed for is here in this moment. The whole love, the whole happiness, the whole self. The wholeness of true nature is right here, right here in the simplicity of this moment. The surrender is to be here, to come to the felt sense of being, of simply being. We could say in simplicity that you can be aware of thoughts that come and go, you can be aware of feelings and sensations that feel like body can be aware of everything. Aware of sense perception that divides. And as that which is aware of things, what are you? What are you that can see the big picture? What are you that is so zoomed out so infinite and vast, what are you that can see the whole picture? What are you? Where are you? The 
that you can see the whole picture, you can see the whole world, you can see the universes, you can see it all. And yet you are always Vasta because you are always aware. And so the attention relaxes. And as the attention relaxes, you recognize that there's always a zoomed out perspective here, that your true nature, the whole self, is always here. And you are ever present, ever present, omnipresent, everywhere. You are bound less, limit less, unconstrained or constrict, constricted in any, any way. There is no story. There is nothing other than this simple felt sense of yourself just being. silence, the stop, the stillness, the stillness of your own presence, that you are here, you know you are here, the same felt sense of yourself being here is here, but you can see the person can see the thoughts, you are aware of everything about that person, and yet you are vaster, you are bigger, you are free of limitation. And this surrender here is just to receive just to receive without needing, without understanding, without any kind of goal. It is to be here so fully that all tendrils that could go out turn inward. All tendrils turn inward and let go of reaching out or needing, desiring, or wanting, and all tendrils are turned inward. You turn inward into yourself. And the felt sense of your own presence is still. You know you are here. You do not know what you are or where you are. You have no edges can feel the freedom, can feel the wholeness. You have no name, no form, no story, just the wholeness and this illuminated remembering that this is who you are. This is the essence nature, the essential nature It is the self itself that remembers itself. These words are that one self speaking only to itself. And hear the belonging, hear the remembering. Hear a sense of docking into your own essential nature, the disappearance of the sense of fragmentation of division, the disappearance of edges, of boundaries, just the felt sense of wholeness. There is nothing to know, 
nothing to understand, nothing to attain. It is just to be here, to feel the simple remembering. Feel the alive silence. Recognize the alive silence, the alive stillness. This is where the power is, the power that changes everything, changes my life into the eternal life. Eternal life is life that never dies. It is the life that lives through the form, animates the form, permeates everything. It is the life eternal, the aliveness of life that is ever alive. Before birth, after death, life is alive, living as itself, living as its illuminated self. What dies is the illusion. What dies is not who you are. This is where the power is, the true power of knowing your invincible, eternal nature. the oneness of being, being the self, being, being, simple openness, emptiness. The wide open heart that just is, the shining light of the self, knowing itself, remembering, this is who you are. This is the essence nature. This is who you have always been. This remembering, remembering, ever deepening into this remembering. That the play of life is only here to humble away, humble away, humble away. We could say consciousness experiencing itself in every configuration. There is a, there is a, a play of patterning that can never be understood. The why and the how in truth can never be fully understood or explained. And that is the essential unfathomable and how we have to come to the true nature that is not knowing. It is not a knowing with the mind. There is a pure knowing of the self knowing itself. And then everything else makes sense even though there is no mental understanding. Let's say intelligence will bring forward exactly what is needed. But we have to be brought to this not knowing. The mind so hungry for knowledge, so hungry for more knowledge. 
constantly believing that it has some kind of power, that if it learns more, then it will get what it wants. But that is the delusion. That is the delusion. And so much of the play of the world is feeding that delusion, feeding that delusion with all kinds of flavors of entertainment, even spiritual entertainment. Do not find yourself in any kind of entertainment. You find yourself within yourself. You find yourself in the remembering of the essential nature right here now. You find yourself in the aliveness of the longing. You find yourself in the aliveness of recognizing what you are not in order to reveal what you are. Recognizing what you are not. You are not a thing. You are not any kind of fraction. You are not someone that needs to know anything. You have everything, everything. You are the power. You are the glory. You are the knowing of yourself. You are the love that is undivided and whole. This is the true nature. And you already are. And so there is this knowing already here in place. It is just the remembering. It is just for the attention to fall fully, fully into a surrender where the remembering can anchor, can root. And once it has anchored and rooted, once there are glimpses, it's just about deepening and deepening and deepening, coming to the remembering, coming to the remembering, and watching how the play can bring forward a sense of forgetting. But that sense of forgetting is just an overlay. The truth of who you are never forgets, never forgets. And this is the true power. The true power is the remembering. And once you remember this true power of yourself, the peace, the freedom, the happiness, the whole self that just is, once there is this remembering, let's say it is your duty, your mission, to keep remembering while the process of refinement and everything will attempt to pull the attention away into a sense of forgetting. It does not really matter what is happening in the story. It does not matter what is happening on the surface. And yet what is happening on the surface has this divine possibility of humbling everything, humbling all of the patterns of ego sense, all of the patterns that can move in a small dance and bring the felt sense of separation. The mind cannot create a way of diminishing these patterns. The only way the patterns dissolve is by illuminating them as the awareness, illuminating them as the zoomed out seer of the big picture. As the zoomed out seer, you recognize that you are not the scene, right? The first identification with being someone is being identified with experience being identified as the seen. And in true identification, you do not even recognize there is a seer of that. But the grace of witnessing offers this possibility of opening, opening, opening. And you recognize in truth, oh, I am not the seen, I am not the person, I am the seer. I am the vast open awareness that can see the seen, see the experience, I am the experiencer, the observer, the seer, have been identified with experience and identified with experience, identified with the seen, 
believing you are that one, that someone, dancing the small dance, but as soon as you can zoom out and you can see the big picture, can recognize, oh, I am not, I am not limited to that person. I am not limited to that character. Yes, you can still feel all of the attributes, let's say, of the character, the laws of nature moving and flowing, but you are the seer. You are the seer, not the seen. You are the vast open space in which the happening is happening. See it now as the pointings come. Notice it, confirm it. Notice that where confirmation happens is not in the mind. Confirmation is like an aha. It's a recognition. It's deeper. And as confirmation, the recognition comes in, there's a deepening in, ah, ah, like a layers of relaxation. Letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go and letting go. And every time there's a letting go, it's a surrender, a surrender, a surrender. And surrender is divine. Surrender is not a doing. Can feel that surrender happens ah, just through recognition, just through confirming, following the pointing in the immediacy of now and in the recognition, ah, relaxation, ah, deeper, ah, deeper, deeper. You start to feel like you have no bones and you have no flesh because you do not have bones and flesh and blood. You do not. You can feel, I have no bones, I have no flesh, I have no body, I am everywhere. As you relax and you relax and you relax, you go deeper than muscle relaxation, organ relaxation, system relaxation. You go deeper and deeper and you recognize, I have no body. I have no, I have no bones. You are resting in the bones of clarity. You are resting in the bones of truth. You can see the bones, you can see the body, you can see the flesh, you can see the mind, you can see it all. But you recognize, I am before body. I am before mind. I am before everything. If I am not body and I am not mind, then I am not form, I am not story. I am formless, eternal being. I am just this presence, plain and simple. Plain and simple, and yet, my goodness, the fullness, the wholeness of being the whole self. <laughs> Everywhere. Confirming in your direct experience. You feel like there is no ground. You feel like you are no one. You feel like there's nothing here. You feel like there's emptiness. And yet in the emptiness, you can feel a fullness that you are still here. Your presence is still here. And your presence is everything. Everything. This is where the emptiness is everything. The nothing is everything in this moment. So you are not the bones, you are not the flesh, you are not the form, you are not the story, you are not the mind, the thoughts. And yet you are here. You can recognize that you are here. It's without question, you are here. But you are the seer. You are the witness, seer of the scene. You are the divine experiencer. You are not identified in the experience of being someone. You have relaxed out of identification and you are bigger, vaster, so vast. You are infinite. You are everywhere. There are no bounds. There are no edges. You are freedom. You are freedom. Freedom itself. Freedom itself. At some point, there is the listening, receiving listening of these words. And at some point, it suddenly makes sense in a way that you have been striving for it to make sense. I do not understand, I want to understand, but understanding does not happen in the mind. It is just to keep receiving, keep receiving as the openness, 
And at some point, there's a smile, and it's an inner smile. Oh, freedom itself. I am freedom itself. This is what I am. I am freedom. I am silence. I am stillness. I am the presence. This is what I am. I am not the person. I am not limited. I am this being that is everywhere. I am the aliveness of the stillness. I am so pristine and pure and still in what I am. And yet I am alive as the presence, alive as the presence. And there is a knowing here. And where is this knowing? It's not in here. No, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. You are not the body. You are not the bones. You are not the flesh. You are not the blood. You are not the organs. You are not any of that which is moving and changing. You are not any of that that is in form. You are not the incarnation, let's say. You are the immortal, invincible, formless being. And so you feel yourself everywhere. Of course the mind is going to say, there's nothing here, this cannot be it. Because the mind is searching for something. The mind is searching for something that fits into the context of the me. So the mind searching can never bear fruit. It is a fruitless search for the mind. And that's why the mind will keep searching, keep searching. And it will keep searching in things. If I get this knowledge, if I get this knowledge, if I get this knowledge, then I will know, then I will know, then I will be big enough, powerful enough, strong enough, then I will have the, the grace of, of knowing enough. That is the mind's delusion. It is to unlearn everything, know nothing, know nothing, to be empty here now, to be so fully empty here now that mind can stop, mind can collapse because it is so empty of its pumped up ideas of what it thinks it knows and what it thinks it is. It gets deflated, deflated, and there's nothing left. And when there's nothing left, what remains? What remains in the ashes of the former, the former sense of someone is true life, is life eternal, is the life that always is, the presence that you have always been before body, before name, before story. You have always been. How could the mind even imagine that you can know this right now? Of course, it can feel that it would be completely unimaginable, can only be known in true direct experience. You can die into wholeness, this moment, here now. Die into yourself, can die into freedom, right here, now. And then life can fully live again but life can now live on the surface of life as its eternal nature, as the timeless one. This is what is here now in this timeless moment. You do not have to imagine, you do not have to imagine what it is to be eternal life. You are eternal life. You are the universal, eternal life, the timeless one that just is. There could be weather patterns moving through on the surface of life. But you are eternally illuminated in your true nature, eternally illuminated. And when the dawning comes, it is an ever fresh dawning the now, the now, the now, the ever fresh realization, greater clarity, greater depth, greater recognition, right? A deeper relaxation, deeper, deeper, deeper. Once you have relaxed out of belief of being a body, once you recognize you are just the presence, 
then everything is happening in consciousness itself. There's still a deeper relaxation, a deeper relaxation, ever, ever deepening. So it is to take the hand, the hand of your true self, your self that is speaking to itself right here now. Feel the attunement, feel the resonance. Do not look for an end goal. Do not look for something. Do not let the mind rob you of your own nature for another second. Do not live in delusion for another second. Remember, remember the glory. Remember the glory of simply being. To just remember now is enough. Just to remember now, to fall in and in and in, to know that the vastness, the vastness of your own presence is what is holding you, the ground of being. And to fall in, you are the seer, the seer, the seer, not the seen. And at some point, for those that already know, being the seer and not the seen, there is the utter collapse of the seer and the seen into pure seeing. Just the simplicity of life living itself. just this moment, just as it is, whole self, whole love, whole truth, whole happiness, whole joy, causeless. There's nothing to know here, nothing to know. It's just about being. And in being yourself, the field of intelligence, it is pure knowledge, is wisdom, wisdom, illuminated wisdom is right here and everything, everything is right here, right here. So to feel the resonance of truth, feel the resonance of truth just as it is here Attune, remember, just be, just to be yourself, just to be yourself. The self is magnetically drawn to itself, it is utterly fascinated with itself. So when you feel the attunement, the resonance, there is a pull, and the pull is the self into itself. It is the shift of the attention into a relaxation where the self is nested into itself. We could say it's like a, a divine fascination and it might feel if eyes are closed to just be this draw, this deep, deep pull eyes are open, the fascination will bring you so close, so close. Even if a herd of elephants stamped through the room right now, you would not leave. There's nothing, nothing of the worldly that could pull you away from yourself. It's a divine fascination because you can hear your own voice, you can hear the voice of your own heart speaking to you, revealing your deepest, deepest longing, speaking it out loud. The divine fascination of the self drawn into itself. There is a power 
a felt sense. There is nothing more important than this. There is nothing more profound than knowing this all the way, falling deeper, deeper, deeper. And there is an enlivenment of the yes, the yes, the yes. The recognition, recognition of truth is like a clear singing bell that is just saying yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. What does it take? It takes everything. Yes, I'm in. <laughs> right? It's a, it's a felt sense of a pull. A pull. And that pull gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Can recognize the felt sense of that pull. It's so alive. Where is it pulling from? What is that pull that is so alive? What is that call, that silent call that you cannot refuse? It does not matter how loud the world is screaming for your attention. It will not move away from this because you can feel how compelling it is. You can feel a quality of being pulled to yourself that is pure devotion. It is not a devotion to something. It's a pure quality of recognition. It is the longing, the yearning. It is this magnetic, divine fascination with yourself. Yes, 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 more of this, more of this, more of this. I never ever want to leave this because you start to feel more and more finer qualities of yourself, the remembering of your essence nature. It is such a pull, such a longing. You want to get closer and closer. You cannot find a way with your physicality to be close enough that like you could squash all the way in and cozy, cozy right up, but you would not feel close enough. The pull is even greater. It's so, so strong. It is the love affair of all love affairs. It is pulling you in, pulling you into yourself. You cannot resist, you cannot resist, nor would you want to. It is the divine love affair with yourself. It's so compelling, so compelling, so rich and so compelling. It is like every feeling of love that has ever, ever welled up in your being that has drawn you to another being in a love affair. It is like that amplified a gazillion times, illuminated a gazillion, gazillion times, even more than that, where numbers run out and we're in the infinite pull, we're in the infinite draw. It's so strong, it's so powerful. It cannot be satiated in the worldly. And that is what we have to recognize. It is the itch that you can never scratch in the worldly. It is absolutely unfulfillable, unsatiable in the worldly. It can only be satiated in the knowing of yourself, the pull into yourself. Just to feel a little sip of that. Feel how you can feel the truth of what is being spoken now, whether you feel a sip, a little, a little sip of that divine love affair pulling you in. The divine nectar, the soma, it's so intoxicating. Just a little drop will intoxicate you forever. <laughs> but as you are intoxicated and you are pulled into the love affair, the nectar starts to flow, the bliss starts to flow, and oh my goodness, here is ecstatic rapture you cannot, you cannot, you cannot leave, you cannot leave the ecstatic rapture of being pulled into yourself, into the divine love affair, into being the living surrender, living surrender, 
surrendering in and in and in. The mind stops worrying. What about my life? What about the things that I have to do? Because the body, you are not the body. So there is no ability to control. The body is being lived. The body is being danced on a certain level. You're just like a jelly. You're like a jelly. You're like a puppet. You're just like a puppet. You've got no capacity to try to control anything because there's this divine flow of moving through you and you're in constant surrender and life is just living and you the one that you thought you were you are just a puppet you are just <laughs> an instrument <laughs> being being played you are an instrument just being played and the music is divine the strings are being plucked and you can feel that the true power never belonged to the one you thought you were you can feel the true power is with love is with this love affair is with the divine and the strings are being plucked and you're being played and you have no control you have no control because you are being played you are being played you are being played and you are just in love, in love with this pull into yourself. You are just in love with this divine fascination for yourself. And the more you are fascinated, the more you are pulled in. And yes, sometimes those weather patterns will float in and they will seem so real. They will seem so real because Maya, the, the wonder, the wonder of how Shakti creates Maya from her own musings and out of her own heart, she creates the appearance of Maya. It feels so real. It feels so true. It can get so lost in the storm of the mind. But you never ever leave yourself. The fascination, the pull is always here. So it is to come to the longing. And when you come to the longing, it's like sitting right at the top of one of those slippy slides, <laughs> right? The divine slippy slide. You come to your longing, you feel your longing, you feel the openness, you feel the pull, and suddenly, whoosh, whoosh, you're, you're slipping back down the slippy slide and you're falling in, you're falling in to the ocean of blissful nectar, of remembering. And you're right here where you have always been, right? And now you can see, oh, that story, it's so believable. It's so thick when you're stuck in it. It's so thick. And now you have a sense, oh, next time that comes around, I'm going to remember that it's just the Maya. It's just a jungle, a jungle of illusory pictures. And you are not fooled. You can navigate it without leaving yourself. You can navigate it resting, resting, absorbed in the grace and power, the true power, the true power. It's where all the true spice is, right? Spice, it gives life its ability to flow. The true power, the true aliveness, just to feel where you can feel the resonance and feel the aliveness of the longing, the draw, the fascination with yourself. Feel the purity. And when you feel the purity, 
can recognize from this true perspective how those layers of fog can, can dull the purity of your longing, the purity of your fascination with yourself. You can feel how deep, how deep and eternal is this timeless pull into yourself. Every being has some capacity to recognize. Every being, because every being already belongs to the one being. It is all there is. It is who you are. Right here now. And so it is to receive the grace of the flavor of the, the taste that is your direct experience right now. Not to want anything other than the exact perfect grace of this moment. From the zoomed out perspective, either of being the seer, recognizing the seer, or zoomed out, or just being the aliveness of pure seeing, where there's no one seeing, there's just pure and simple seeing, listening, receiving, just this moment, just as it is. And just to feel how we have journeyed from the surface appearance to the deeper, deeper bones of clarity. We have journeyed from the surface to the deep, clear remembering and yet simultaneously the surface appearance is still here. But you are zoomed out and seeing from a true perspective. So again, to just recognize, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. But when you come to the zoomed out true perspective, you know who you are. And even when there is a zooming in, you never leave the knowing of being zoomed out, the true perspective, the clear perspective of knowing yourself. Divine fascination, the divine love affair, all happening inside the vast, infinite heart that every love affair is really carrying you into this love affair, this true love affair with yourself, with the divine. A love affair with divine love. Nothing more profound than that. 